We're back. Matteo Lane is going to cook with me, and we're going to make this delicious pasta. Darling, do you need prep bowls? Do you need a pan? What um, do you need? You know what I do? I need someone to, to grate the Pecorino Romano. Okay. Uh, really, really, I'll really finely. I have to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm putting you to work. Get to work. Grating is hard. It is hard. I but mean it. Ooh, that's, that's a good. lot of cheese. How did you do that so quickly? I don't know. I think I developed my cheese grating thing from the last episode. We are so not wasting the cheese on the counter. That's so going into the pasta, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's still beautiful. Do right? you have a little bit of white wine? I do. One thing I cannot do is open a bottle of wine. Can you? No. No, see, we're, we're stuck here. There we go. No, I think I got it this time. Sorry. <laughs> Bravo. Bravissimo. Grazie. Grazie. Grazie mille. Okay, so today we are making bucatini alla madrishana. So a madrishana is a dish from a madrisha, which is outside of Rome. Uh, it's a, it's kind of like the red carbonaro, like the red alla grisha, and uh, they're very specific in uh, Rome. So if you make a madrishana, you can only use two types of pasta. So you can use bucatini or mezzi rigatoni. So right. you do, would okay. not use penne, you would not use fresh pasta, you would not use orecchette, okay. you would not use fettuccine, right. parpadelle. So Ooh. we have ourselves some bucatini, dry pasta. You always use a dry pasta. And That's then what I think too, yeah. Our ingredients are going to be, this is pecorino romano, and it's right. a younger pecorino, so it's a softer cheese. This is guanciale. So guanciale is from this part of the pig, the, the cheek. Cheek. And you don't want to use pancetta. No. You don't want bacon or pancetta. This okay. goes with carbonara too. No pancetta. You want guanciale. Listen to him. He's not kidding. This is very Can Roman. The Roman me. rules of pasta, so to speak. <laughs> ah! Because exactly. they will yell at you in Yes, Rome. I know. It's true. They will. This is a passata. So this is not like a tomato sauce. It's literally pureed tomato. Mm -hmm. I get muti. Italians love it. And it has nothing in it. No salt, no vinegar, nothing. Just plain old tomatoes. In right? Ingredients are tomatoes and Mediterranean sea salt. Okay, so it's a little salt. Yeah. And then some white wine for the deglazing. And this is it. So we're gonna take our guanciale into a cold pan. Oh, in a cold pan. Okay. Yeah. And on a low, low heat. We're just gonna let that cook down. Sauce. And by the way, don't use pepperoncino in this, right? This is not a place for pepperoncino. I mean, you could if you, you wanted could? to, but you we're not. You could? Wait, you just got finished saying like, you can't use this. You can't use, you can only use penne and bucatini. Pepperoncino you could. And I even met a Roman woman once who oh. said that secret to matriciana is to add balsamic vinegar. But I've never really? heard that before, so. We're not like it. We're not doing that today. No, we're not. Yeah, but this is, you know, I could I could start cooking my pasta now because how long does it take to cook the bucatini? Seven mm -hmm. minutes. Cooking time. Don't believe it. Don't Nine believe minutes. It. So we're gonna Don't wait. Don't believe it. Don't we're believe it. Seven minutes, I think. Mm. I love guanciale. Guanciale has such a specific taste, and people say, "Well, I don't have guanciale where I live," and da da da. You do have the internet, so you can order some. This is true. I will tell you that I have made. Carbonara, and I have made a matriciana with pancetta. It, pancetta. I have, and it's pretty damn delicious. I'm just saying. Oh, I please, I totally get that. it. Relax. I cooked carbonara okay. for you. Remember we cooked it together? Yes, I do. At the and I kept cellar? saying, darling, really? And you kept saying, no, absolutely not. No. I was like, okay, fine, fine. You're only allowed to use guanciale. And period. how was it? It was delicious. And, and here's the thing. I love that you started with a cold pan here. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. That's so smart. Because this is going to start releasing the fat soon and get transparent. And we just want it, you don't want it too crunchy. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take about three quarters of it out and let it sit and stay crisp. And the other part's going to stay in here. Just getting ready, just getting ready, slotted spoon. By the way, that's why I have 40 I slotted use, spoons, because I, like I don't want to clean the last one I use. I love all, all these tongs, it's so great. Well, because whisk. everyone has tongs, and you need tongs, and everybody's whisking something, right? Someone's making, like, a corn pudding, and you're making something with a whisk, and what do you do, right? That's why everybody needs a whisk. Okay? I Thank will, you. I will say I'm out there. Thank you, comments. <laughs> Thank you, comments. Oh, these comments. The, the comments are, this one guy was like, I don't like your jeans, so I just blocked him. Wow, well I block everybody that yeah. doesn't like things. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, we're looking pretty good here. And basically what I'm trying to do is get all the fat and all the flavor from the guanciale. I'm gonna, once it crisps up, I'm gonna take the guanciale out, I'm gonna leave some in there, and I'm gonna deglaze that, bring some white wine in there. And then leave I'm going some to of the guanciale in there? Just some, okay. just a little bit. All right, And then some. I'm gonna take my some. passata and bring my passata in. 
maybe a little salt, maybe a little pepperoncino, and then just let that cook, and then cook our pasta, bring our pasta in, and then just take a handful of pecorino and throw it in there. Bunch and of then, boom, you have Amatriciana. The best place for Amatriciana in Rome is called Z Umberto in Trastevere a Roma, and you have to get Bugatini alla Matriciana, and for appetizers, get Fior di Zucca. I get mm. Senza Alici. Another divine city is Milan, darling. Milan has some incredible specialty food, too. Milan is, uh, for me, is like a, a distant land or something because I'm so used to Southern Italian culture growing up every summer in Sicily and then going to Rome, and Rome is still considered the South, depending on where you're from. Mm -hmm. And uh, this looks pretty much done. So, you know, when I went to Milan for the first time, it was a little, I was a little like, almost like culture shocked. It's extremely fancy. It's very fancy. Oh, look how little you left in there. You just left a like, little bit. Just like one tablespoon of, really, not even. There's our guanciale. So we're gonna take our white wine and just pour a little bit. Beautiful. Gorgeous. And then just let this cook down for a little bit. I love it already. I love wine and food. Oh yeah. I it love it in, in sauce. Je ne sais quoi. Like and then we're gonna put in our delicious passata. And it's just puree tomato. And I would recommend getting it from Italy because tomatoes are from America and they were brought back to Italy when they went to the Americas. And um, the Italian soil is so rich, it changed the flavor and color of tomatoes to this red sort of sweet flavor. Delicious, dense thing. Mm. It's so good. Well, Americans ruined their tomato crops by making the, most of them harder in order to pick easier by machine. Is That's that so? The sad thing. Yeah. Oh, I didn't that know happened that. like, yeah, like because, because somehow we needed more produce. And so, in order to make it easier to harvest tomatoes, like President Nixon sort of approved this thing where you make, to, or someone did, some person approved something. I, I blame everything on Nixon. You know? <laughs> Um, I need a sink. Hold on a second. Do you want to? Do you want to? Oh, look at you! You're such an old lady. I can't even believe you're doing this. Why? Look what he's doing. He's like he's rinsing the bottle and using a little water in the sauce with the. Of course, darling. Because we can't bear to throw the bottle out without. We can't bear it. Yeah. Boy, that smells good. Yes, yeah, nice. the wine and the pork and the. Oh, ooh, yeah, Jackie. I might add a little more water in here. But you know, it's not gonna cook. Do you for that want long. pasta water? Do you want hot water? Cold water? Soda water? What soda water? Take a like a third of a cup of water. Because tomato sauce, you know, you want it to eventually thicken up. You don't want it to start right. thick. All right. So right. I'm gonna let this cook and I'm gonna put in just a little bit of salt. Do you use kosher salt when you cook or do you use uh, I have a sea salt. Right. Like a Sicilian sea salt well, that I use. Well, this is also sea salt. You know, this is a beautiful oh, perfect. Yeah. sea salt. Yeah, Madison. this is exactly what I would use. Okay. This is great. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. We're just going to let that cook. You can even try the guanciale. Try some. Thank you. Mmm. This tastes like the herbs that the animal was fed or the grass. It really is delicious, that guanciale, man. That is incredible. I'm using about that much. And then I'm going to try some of our water. Taste it. This is for Giovanni Flores. <laughs> And he's more salt. Wow, you see. That should be good. I yeah. always love how it, how it starts boiling madly when you put salt in. Did right? you notice that? It's like you've yeah. angered a monster right. or like, something. Right, it's like, what have I done? I'm sorry I offended you, water. <laughs> okay, so our pasta water is boiling. The most important thing is the, the pasta is the star, not the sauce. So the sauce should lightly coat the pasta. So, you know, these Amer American restaurants, other world restaurants, oh. right, where it's drowning in the sauce. And I, it's about the pasta. So everything is to accent and in... It's a condiment. Shall we call it a condiment? Right? Because that's what it is, a condiment. Wait a minute. By the way, I make delicious, um, uh, just plain tomato sauce. It's like, it's not exactly... Uh, I use some pepperoncino in it, so it's a little spicy, but it's just tomato sauce, right? Mm -hmm. And I make lots of it and I jar it mm. in jars. And the jars I use are not the massive jars. The jars are like what you would want for a pound of pasta. People go like, is this enough for a pound? And I go, yeah, yeah, it's enough for a pound of pasta, queen. I like to stir my pasta to give it like a circular. Oh, instead of tongs? Yeah, I use a, a wooden spoon with my pasta. Okay. I don't know why, I've just been cooking like that since I was a kid, so. I like That's a, a good tip, spoon. I like that. I mean, I'll take a tong sometimes or like a pasta, like, what is it called, like the, uh, like the claw, it almost looks like a claw. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That we have too somewhere, I have a claw. 
but I don't really believe in those claws. They're, they're I feel okay like they're, I think like there's an 80s thing about a claw that they discovered claws and they don't really work. It does um, feel very 80s. It does, it does right? Like a claw. It's like, oh, wow, a claw. By the way, when I was in the 80s, when I was like in my late teens, shall we say, mm -hmm. there was like this thing about how pasta was dietetic, like you should eat it if you want to lose weight. I swear. What? I swear, ask anybody my age. They'll tell you there was like two years where the world was just eating pasta, thinking it was diet food. I promise you, look at, I mean it. Everybody, when, when everybody started working out, they were like, oh yeah, pasta's diet food. I'm just going to eat some spaghetti and go work out and I'm going to be so skinny. Yeah, I mean it. Pasta was like, <laughs> I'm telling you, there was a time in the 1980s when pasta was considered diet food. All right? Comments below. It's uh, like, what's her name? Susan Powder going like, yes, ham. Yes, you I can remember eat ham. her, the short blonde haired Powder, lady yeah. who was like, yeah, yeah, I remember her Susan Powder. commercials and stuff. Yeah. She had those infomercials and she, I just remember being a little gay kid watching this like angry white lady yell at people about like, weight. And I was like, something. I was, she was about always her. on something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like the first time I saw Liza Minnelli on TV was the Michael Jackson 30th anniversary special and she just recovered from brain encephalitis. And so she wasn't Liza as we knew her, right. but even then I was 13. Like I'm attracted to this woman. Of course you. Like were. I felt a, I felt a, a pull darling. towards absolutely, her. Absolutely. This is going by very well. I'm gonna take a little bit of the pasta water now because I want the starch so it can thicken it up. Excuse me, mommy. Because monsieur. the pasta is the star. The pasta is. Oui, the star. la pasta est il star. And then let that cook down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my pasta and I'm just gonna bring it in. So I guess we can strain it. Do you have the strainer? Yes, I do. Okay. Wait a minute now. Well, that one's sort of dirty. So let me get another strainer because I have another strainer. <laughs> See? Thank you, people. Thank you for the comments. Here. Is that big enough? Anything's fine. Anyone. Well, I've heard that before. Oh, you know what? Let's get the bottle. This one. Go on. I'll take this one. Una scala macaron, which I think is dialect for strainer. I do have a little disorder. Don't know. I have a strainer disorder. I like a lot of strainers. Okay, go on. Okay. Never pour water over your pasta afterwards, you fucking monster. You want- Oh no, you mean people who rinse their pasta? Yeah, they're disgusting. Like, oh, no. Are you crazy? The Italians call them medigans. Well, okay. you know, and by the way, also people who use oil in the water in their pasta, I uh, know. No, 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 you don't, you don't. No, 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 no. Because you want that starch from the... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you ooh, want it to... Love. Look at the size of this here. pan. It's fantastic. Do you all like the, way. the size? Because I could have given you a smaller pan. No, this is perfect. Okay, this is swear. exactly what I right, want. Good, good, good. I so we're just going to let it keep cooking in there. Then we're going to turn it off. And we're going to bring in our you just said you just, you just said, this is exactly what I want. My Chicago accent. I totally, it just came out just a little bit. It was just Chicago for me. Okay, so I've taken it off the heat. And now... Look how beautiful that is. I'm taking it? our pecorino. I mean, you don't want to go light on the pecorino. This is going to help make it creamy. Thick. Thicken it up. Mm -hmm. Look at the color, too. It's going pink-ish. Mm -hmm. Okay, What's our guanciale is right in. Look how beautiful that is, darling. Now, the reason beautiful. I didn't keep the guanciale all in there is because then it, we wouldn't get the... I want the texture difference. I want the crispy guanciale with the bite of the pasta, with the red sauce. Right. And if you keep the guanciale oh. in, it'll stay too soft because it's cooking beautiful. in that red sauce. So. so this is one of those processes that you really have to, like, scream at your guests and go, Sit the fuck down! Dinner is ready, you bitches! Because if they miss it, they miss, right? I mean, I'm serious. And you need some bowls, obviously, right? This is like, um, you know, like showgirls. Like, oh, I have no bowls. I don't have any bowls. And here, I'm going to throw some marbles on the floor so that while you, here we go. Okay, How's and these? then now I'll take the tongs. You see, you always need tongs. Ooh, that pecorino has melted in beautifully. Does this not look absolutely it stunning? It looks so divine, Matteo Lane. It looks incredible. So by the way, where do you come by a name like Lane, darling? My dad is Irish. My mom is Italian and what? Mexican. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't believe that. And do I get to garnish with more cheese? Of course. Are you right? Absolutely. Yes. And do not use like you don't want basil too much. or no, rosemary, no, no. nothing. Just this is what it is. Because pecorino is so strong, when you garnish with it, unlike Parmesan, you don't want too much. You just oh, well, want I'm eating just it because enough. I'm not waiting for you, queen. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, go ahead. And do you see how the pasta is just perfectly coated with that red sauce? Mm-hmm. Mm. How is it? Mmm. Wow. Is it good? Yes, it's really, really good. Yeah, this is so good. By the way, mm -hmm. spaghetti on camera. Like, no spaghetti on camera and no spaghetti on, like, dates. I always get spaghetti on dates. I don't care what I look like. 
Really? Oh, well, you know, that's why you're still single, Mateo. <laughs> that's why. Because I get spaghetti on dates. Yes. Yeah, that's true. 